Alors vous voyez que nous sommes ici à l'intérieur de l'oreille moyenne et en soulevant le tympan, on voit très bien cette prothèse qui semble toujours en position mais qui vous voyez, ne fonctionne pas bien parce qu'elle est, euh, est trop hyper mobile comme ça, elle n'a pas de fonction parfaite de transmission à l'étrier qui est dans la profondeur et qui lui est mobile. Donc très clairement, il va falloir euh, changer cette prothèse pour pouvoir euh, faire un montage qui sera beaucoup plus efficace et beaucoup plus stable également, même si la stabilité n'est pas le problème ici, puisque vous voyez qu'elle est, elle est toujours bien stable, mais elle, elle, il y a une perte d'énergie liée à cette hypermobilité, à ces mouvements paradoxaux de cette prothèse. So this is the right revision tympanoplasty following a PORP insertion uh, several years ago, many years ago. And it, which is very interesting to see that typically this is what we have when using PORP. Everything seems fine. Uh, this PORP has a adoxylapatide head with an elongated head uh, to reach the uh, malleus there. And a polycell, uh, polycell shaft, hollow shaft, that is a, a really uh, old-fashioned prosthesis. Uh, and you see the prosthesis and the, the, the stapes is mobile here uh, and uh, clearly it looks fine, but if you move the prosthesis, we see that there's a lot of tilting of this prosthesis, uh, which means that there is a lack of energy in this case, and this is the reason why it doesn't work. So, of course, the aim here will be to typically use uh, the synastic bending technique with the use of a torque. So, the first point here is to dissect the malleus handle in order to remove the prosthesis from the malleus. Voilà, on va d'abord aller retirer cette prothèse du marteau, canner manche du marteau un 12. Donc on va aller disséquer d'abord la tête de la prothèse pour pouvoir la retirer, ce qui veut dire qu'il faut donc que je la dégage du marteau. So it's very easy to remove it because, of course, the, the groove also is not very deep compared to the new prosthesis we designed here to make the groove deeper and to have a better stability, ciseau. And the next step will be, if possible, to relocate the malus. Voilà, je retire cette prothèse. Canne les manches du marteau. On va aller voir le, le marteau maintenant pour voir un petit peu ce que l'on a comme aspect de positionnement du marteau qui paraît quand même très antérieur et qu'il va falloir repositionner plus en arrière. Ciseau si on veut avoir quelque chose de beaucoup plus stable à la fin en termes de montage de prothèse. Alors c'est ce qu'on appelle une prothèse partielle que je vous ai retirée et on va la remplacer par très probablement une prothèse totale. Voilà donc le tympan est intact, il n'y a pas de problème. Okay, so now we need to relocate the malleus, so I will have to dissect the malleus here, which is really anterior, you see the position of the malleus. And really this type of situation was exactly uh, the aim of uh, the malleus relocation technique and then also the synastic bending. Uh, this is the reason why I introduced those two techniques to in increase the stability of the prosthesis in order to get a, a final vertical position of the prosthesis, so this needs that we need to place uh, the malice over the uh, stapes foot plate. Voilà, donc je suis en train là de disséquer le marteau. Ciseaux, s'il vous plaît. And it's more difficult to dissect the malice when it is, of course, mobile, but there is no more incus which was removed. Uh, during the previous operation. So I'm now dissecting here. So it's good to try to use the sucker uh, to, stabili to stabilize the malice while working on it. Donc la première étape consiste à séparer le marteau du tympan. I have to find a, a cleavage plane here underneath the perichondrum. I, wha I, what I need is to elevate the perichondrum flap here, uh, stay in contact with the bone. I will have to reinforce the tympanic membrane, so I will have to take a perichondrum graft anyway. 
crois que je prends une, du péricondre. Hein. Voilà, on prendra une greffe de péricondre tout à l'heure pour renforcer euh, le tympan. So we have to stay in contact with the bone. But the, the tympani moment is really atrophic, so it's good to reinforce the drum anyway. So it's not a major issue here. The ambo is always the problem, of course, as we know. Voilà, j'arrive donc à la partie euh, inférieure du marteau. Now it's fine. Voilà, le marteau est entièrement euh, libéré, oh, sauf peut-être le, le col qu'on va aller libérer maintenant. So I need now to go to the neck of the malus, because we need to separate entirely the malus. So we will have, of course, an hypermobile uh, uh, malus, but it's fine. Here we go. Now it's, it's great. And I need now to cut the ten to ten pan eye. Non, c'est au direct, s'il vous plaît. Okay, and now I will relocate the malleus by overstretching the the anterior tympanomalle ligament. Crochet, s'il vous plaît. Voilà, donc là maintenant, le marteau est suffisamment libéré pour qu'on puisse le ramener plus en arrière. En fait, le principe, c'est de l'amener, vous voyez, ici à hauteur de la tête de l'étrier pour qu'on puisse mettre une prothèse verticalement tout à l'heure. C'est important pour avoir un montage parfaitement stable. Donc voilà. Alors, on va aller prendre la greffe tout à l'heure. Pour l'instant, je vais aller déterminer la longueur de la prothèse. So, now we need to measure the distance. Before taking the graft, I will measure the distance from the Mali Central to the Stapes full plate, which, which means that I need to remove this fibrous tissue covering the other window. Trois de chouk avec un neuf, s'il vous plaît. Because what I want to have is I have the possibility to place the distal tip of the shaft of the prosthesis in contact with the, with the foot plate just right here, where the stapes is clearly uh, intact and mobile. So that clearly was the technique I was using before introducing the uh, uh, elastic bending uh, technique. And do s'il vous plaît. Bon, ça, ça saigne un tout petit peu, donc on va voir ça tout à l'heure. Pour l'instant, il faut que je finisse de dégager, canner. de dégager de euh, là voilà, attendez que je finisse de dégager l'étrier qu'elle est normal vous pouvez me les séparer un peu s'il vous plaît voilà merci là c'est bon Ok, ciseaux, s'il vous plaît. So I'm just cutting the mucosa here, because I want to have the possibility to use the elastic band, so I need to have enough gap here between the promontory and the stapy superstructure. Vous me préparez un capot cadré, un polycèphe, enfin, j'ai un faux madrénaliné. Table vers moi, s'il vous plaît. Stop. Now I will prepare the elastic bending technique. Un 15 et curette, s'il vous plaît. So we need to cut the, the tendon, but I, I don't really have a clear exposure of the uh, pyramidal process. So as you know, I like to have that. So I will uh, increase the vision of this by removing a little bit of bone from this area of the bony canal wall. Okay, now it's fine. 
Okay, this is going to be fine. Ciseaux, s'il vous plaît. Un neuf. Ok, so we're going to cut the tendon now. On va aller couper le petit tendon d'étrier puisque, en fait, on va s'en servir tout à l'heure, vous allez le voir, pour attacher la prothèse. Ce sont des techniques qu'on a fait évoluer depuis, c'est-à-dire que j'utilise plus maintenant ces prothèses partielles depuis l'introduction des nouvelles techniques qu'on a mis au point ici. Notamment celle que vous allez voir qui est intéressante parce qu'elle permet vraiment d'attacher la prothèse à l'étrier. Bon, alors maintenant, il faut qu'on mesure la hauteur. Un 12, s'il vous plaît. D'abord, vous me donnez... Ah, pardon, avec un 9, vous me donnez moins un gel pour madrénaliné, s'il vous plaît, qu'on va mettre euh, en avant là-bas pour que ça empêche ce saignement de continuer. Non, au contraire, c'est bien. So I will remove this gel form with adrenaline in a second, but in a minute. But first, I want to measure the distance. Un 12 maintenant. Un 12 et crochets. So before that, I need to place the malice on the right position. So we'll replace uh, the tympanic membrane like this. Be sure that the malice is connected to the tympanic membrane, and then I will uh, me I now measure. I think it's fine now. Voilà, je prends le temps, on va mesurer maintenant la hauteur entre le marteau et la platine de l'étrier. Mesureur, s'il vous plaît, c'est le mesureur long, ça, hein? c'est ça? 5, 8, d'accord. So I need to touch the foot plate. Here we go. And we are in the middle, in front of the six, the second one, six millimeter, which means I will cut it at 6.5. 6,50. Can les manches du marteau. But now I will, uh, of course, take the. I will leave the gel form until the end. First, I need to take a perichondrium graft from the tragus. Voilà, on va donc euh, aller prélever la graffe. Je vais mettre sur pause le temps de prélever la graffe et on reviendra pour la mise en place de la prothèse. Okay, so now, now what, what I intend to do is to take a, a graft from the tragus. I will take a perichondrium graft from this right year again. So I just use a mixture of xerocaine adrenaline, 2% adrenaline here, uh, amphitrating the, tr the tragus, and then I will uh, make the incision uh, using a blade 15. This is the one I like to use of the skin, a little bit inside the chamber, and I will now dissect uh, this uh, perichondria, I mean the, the, the uh, tragus, in order to expose the cartilage. But I don't want to take the cartilage. I will take only the perichondrium. I don't like too much the cartilage grafting. Perichondrium is very nice because it's thin, but really resistant. It I'm really happy with this material. Because I, I cartilage, I have the feeling that the cartilage works well in terms of graft, of course, but I have the feeling that it may decrease if you, if we don't uh, trim it enough. It will impair the mobility of the tympanic membrane. So I don't like it too much. I prefer using really perichondrium. Okay, so now we are uh, exposing the medial side of, uh, of the tragus. You see the cartilage with the perichondrium here. So I will, I don't need both sides, so I will only use the, uh, take the, the medial side. So you see I'm making the incision here of the perichondrium, of the perichondrium. And we're going to find the cleavage plane, it seems that we're going to find it quite easily. I can see that it seems to go, which is not always the case. Now I'm going to use a smooth elevator now to elevate the uh, perichondrium. It's gone very well. Here we go. Now I can cut the perichondrium. And you see that I'm leaving, of course, the cartilage. I just removed the perichondrium, which I will put on the press. C'est bon? Put it on the press. So I put it on the press. I like to have a thin 
tenez le, la presse, s'il vous plaît. I have to, I like to have a thin uh, graph, cadenas. So I will put it on the press until I'm using it. So I will close the skin and then uh, go back to the middle ear. And uh, I will put the torch. All right. Okay, so now we're going to close the skin using three stitch. That should be enough because it's just a very small incision, of course. If usually I, I, I use both sides if I have uh, a large perforation, of course, so I'm going to take in that case, I remove the cartilage and then I, I remove from the cartilage, from the outside of the chamber, I remove uh, both sides of perichondrum, medial and lateral side, and then I, I, I put back the, the cartilage in its chamber in, inside the tragus, and it, it works fine. And if I don't have any more uh, pericondrum in the tragus, tragus, I would take it from the conca with a, a small posterior incision, of course, in that case. But it's also is better to take it from, from the tragus because I'm using a transcanal approach, so it's more, uh, course it's nicer for the patient if we stay inside the ear canal. Okay, those stitch I usually remove uh, on the fifth day, fifth, sixth day, uh, and it works well usually. Okay, that's fine. Voilà, donc on va aller placer maintenant la graisse. So the first step now is to place the graft. This is I, li I like to place the graft first. So here is the aspect of the pericondrum graft, which is very nice and thin now. A little bit larger, of course, because of, because of the uh, use of a press, the story. use this side. I want just to reinforce the posterior half of the tympanic membrane. We usually don't need to do that when we have a, a very safe and, and uh, healthy tympanic membrane, I would say. But in that case, as you noticed, it's quite atrophic. So I prefer using it. We, you, we don't need cartilage interposition with this type of process because as you will see, I would use the great uh, medical torp uh, with the alto band, it's the alto with band, alexapetite titanium prosthesis, the one I designed with them, with the Grace Medical uh, Company. Here we go. So I will just now replace the, the drum, and you see we are reinforcing the posterior half of the drum here, which looks fine. Voilà, donc on a renforcé la partie arrière. Je relève la greffe, et il nous reste maintenant à terminer par la mise en place de la prothèse, crochet os, s'il vous plaît. OK, now the last step, of course, is to perform the ossicoloplasty with the torp. So we're going to use this uh, great medical uh, torp with an elastic band. OK, allez, on va allez, couper cette prothèse maintenant. So this comes in a box like this. <coughs> and we need to cut it at 6.5, which means that I need to put it uh, at 5.5 because it goes through the through the prosthesis head, and then we pull it back. So 5.5 here, up to 6.5 at the end when I will uh, pull back the 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 shoe. Voilà, on va couper la partie qui dépasse ici. Et ensuite, on va pouvoir ramener le sabot à la partie inférieure. So you see, I pull back the shaft up now to 6.5. So we have a 6.5 millimeter length uh, torp. 
and I will place it now with the sucker, an aspirator de douze, si je sais. The first step will be to place the shaft. That is the first point. Alors on va placer donc d'abord euh, le, le fût de la prothèse comme ceci. Ensuite, il faut que j'amène, on tourne la tête de façon à ce qu'elle puisse euh, être placée sous le marteau. Prochain haute main gauche, s'il vous plaît. So you see that this process has a deeper groove compared to the previous one, which enables me to insert more deeper, the, of course, deeper the, the Mali sandal, which means that, of course, we believe that with this kind of detail, the process will be more stable, of course, underneath the, underneath the Mali's. I have to move it a little bit more like this, just to have a field clear. Okay, so I'm just using a hook to elevate a little bit the the malice like this and then inserting the malice within the groove here we go now we have a nearly final aspect you see the torp which is clearly in contact with the foot plate in the deep and also you see with the malice sandal here which means that the malice sandal is clearly uh, inserted within the groove just and you see of course the difference between with the previous process that now we have a really a very nice final position. Voilà, on a une prothèse bien en position verticale, tenez. Un, un douze. Et là maintenant, la dernière étape consiste à passer l'anneau autour de l'étrier. So now what we need to do is to, uh, uh, it, it looks good like this, of course, but what I want to do is to, non, trois de souk. I want to increase the stability by attaching the prosthesis shaft with the band, which means that we need to put it like this around the staple's head. I will replace the shaft after that. It's not a problem, but first, what I want first to do is to place it uh, at the right place underneath the tendon like this. Here we go. Now it's fine. And you see the tendon here avoids, uh, try to avoid lateralization of the bend. This is the reason why we need to cut it a little bit like this. So it's nearly done. I just need to reposition a little bit more uh, 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 superiorly the, the torp to have a better position at the end. Can this, if you please? So the shaft looks really good, but I, I want to have a better position. To according to me, it looks like the position is slightly too bent towards the promontory. So I will correct this by uh, uh, pushing the process uh, more superiorly. Like this. There we go. Now it's much better. And you see that we have a really a final uh, nice aspect of this reconstruction with uh, if I move the prosthesis, you see the stapes moving in a nice way together. They are moving together with the stapes. You see that the shaft, which is really nicely positioned here. And uh, We've got a very nice round window sign on the right. Here is the round window. So if I move the prosthesis, we have a, a nice round window sign. Okay. So what I need to do now is to, of course, replace the flap and to see if the prosthesis stays in its, its nice position like this. But we need to check it after having repositioned and re-elevated the flap. Because if the process is too long, then by doing this, you see that the process will move more posteriorly. And then we need to remove it and make it shorter. Voilà, donc je suis en train de faire une dernière vérification. You see the graph here. And you see that everything stays in place, which means that there is no problem here. We have a nice final position. Voilà, donc l'intervention est terminée. Je remets en place la greffe et la peau du conduit auditif externe. Et je vais terminer avec la mise en place.
Il mèche dans le conduit qu'on retirera au cinquième jour avec un audiogramme qui lui sera réalisé, allez-y, le lendemain, c'est-à-dire au sixième, en sachant qu'on n'a pas forcément de résultats immédiats en ce type de chirurgie, l'amélioration pouvant vraiment être étalée sur plusieurs jours, voire même plusieurs semaines, voire même quelques mois. Donc il ne faut pas s'attendre à un résultat immédiat, ça c'est peu probable. C'est progressivement lors du contrôle, surtout du troisième mois, qu'on pourra le voir de manière plus claire. Voilà, je vous dis à très bientôt et merci beaucoup.